Hi, and thanks for watching. Uh, this week I'm building my second cribbage board. Uh, this one was a custom build for a friend who wanted to give it to her parents who enjoy playing cribbage. And they have their boat, uh, so she wanted to give this to them for Christmas. So, um, this is just the start of the process. I kind of gave up power tools, not just out of necessity. So this is me trying to rip cut the board down to size and then play it and square it up. Uh, it also gives me a chance to talk about the length of the video. This one's a little bit longer because I did make several mistakes and I filmed those um, so that you guys can learn from them as you watch. Uh, not make the same mistakes I did. Uh, but this is again just rip cutting the board and then planing it uh, so that it's nice and square. Um, you can see also in the foreground of this shot the layout uh, from the first cribbage board that I made and I would highly 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 recommend making one of those uh, the template is invaluable in terms of placing out the holes it's one of the harder parts of the project so I didn't have to do that on this one which was nice um, but if you're gonna build your own board I would recommend getting some cheap plywood and, and making a template because you're gonna make some mistakes when you go to drill the holes uh, so now I just put in a little slot that helps hold the cards I figured when you're on a boat, if, you're, if the boat's moving, it uh, could be helpful. And there's one important card in cribbage. I'm not going to get into how to play cribbage, but uh, I figured you could stand that one up, and that way everybody can see it at all points. So this is just center punching using that template, and center punching all 161 holes. And I found that that improves the accuracy and the lineup pretty considerably. I didn't do that on my first board, uh, so I thought I would try it on this second one. And then the next step is drilling out all of the 161 holes. I used a 1 8 inch hole because that's what most standard cribbage pegs will fit. Uh, so that's just a drill press uh, drilling out 160 holes. Now the name of the boat is uh, Lynx and so she asked that I try to inscribe it or engrave it. Um, and so I tried some inlay. This is kind of the first time I've ever done inlay, but I wanted to give it a shot. And so this is me uh, kind of carving the name as best as I could into the board. And you can see the process of inlay a little bit. I don't go through the whole thing. Well, you don't have to watch me lay out the whole thing. I, I speed it up with pictures, but this is the, the first part of the process. And I just took a wire and tried to make the uh, engraving as small as possible so the wire had to really be pounded in there and then took a little bit of water and that'll swell the wood fibers around the engraving and lock it into place uh, so I did that and that's the first part of the L and then you'll see in this next picture the, the rest of the L coming into place and then the Y uh, and then there's the N starting to take shape and then there's the full lengths uh, and then here it is with the whole thing with some water on it. So it's a little sloppy, but uh, for my first time I figured that wasn't so bad. So there's the top done. And now we start working on the bottom. In the first cribbage board I did, I just stopped there and did the top. It's totally playable. But this one I wanted to be kind of all a self-contained, <coughs> excuse me, a self-contained unit. Um, so I wanted to... to make a little hole in the bottom that could hold a deck of cards and then also hold the cribbage pegs. Um, that added significant complications. I don't know that I would do it again. Uh, I don't think it really adds that much value to the board and it adds a lot more work. Uh, so this is me. Again, normally I would take my router and just try to route that out. Uh, this is the first time I've ever done a really major, um, you know, hole. <laughs> out of uh, with just a chisel, uh, which is basically a, a mortise that doesn't go all the way through. Um, but it, it requires some different chisel techniques than I used. Uh, a lot of like beveled down chiseling uh, that I hadn't done before. So typically, again, I do it on a router, but it went fairly smoothly once I kind of figured out and got the hang of it. But trying to get that bottom completely flat was a little tricky for me. A uh, router plane would have been nice to have for this, but I just started using hand tools, so router plane is low on the priority list. But there it is, there's the uh, hole kind of carved out, and now I'm squaring it up, and uh, trying to make sure uh, that it can fit the whole deck of cards. 
So you'll see me test fit a deck of cards right there and it's below flush. So I think that's probably fine. Now I'm trying to make a cover for that so that the deck of cards will be held in there. Um, and so I just took another thin piece of walnut. I really wanted to use the same walnut, uh, so I blended in, but I'd already ruined that piece. And then I thought, honestly, it'd be better to use a piece of walnut that was slightly different so you didn't have to hunt for the space where the cards were. And uh, I, think, I think it looks nice, uh, even though it's kind of two different types of walnut. One, just different colors. So now we've got that top cut out and squared up. And I'm just trying to trim it down to size uh, with the shooting board. And then I sanded it uh, as I got closer and closer to size. It's a pretty finicky process trying to get the top to fit in just right. Um, and so I just kind of, as I snuck up on it with those, are, that's 60 grit sandpaper, and then I end up working my way down. Now you can see when I routed it out, I didn't make the edge square. So even though my top was square, uh, the, the this part was not. So I had to go back and try to square that up so that the top would fit nicely in. There's going to be a reveal anywhere anyway. There's going to be a gap between there because of the hinge. But I wanted it to be an equal reveal across the top. And uh, you can get that by having a nice solid connection there. So it looks a little better that way. This is my first mistake, but I figured I'd show it because um, this is what you should do if you're doing it right. And I just, uh, that was the plan, to just gouge out a little place for hinges in the top of this lid. Uh, so I marked out, measured out the hinge, and then marked out its depth, and just ground out another, chiseled out another little spot for that. And you can see the hinge fits nicely in there. Um, but at some point, I'll stop narrating because I narrated it in real time. So I'll let the video take over that narration. So I made a big mistake and I thought I was putting my hinges on, but I was putting them on backwards. So I carved out a little spot for the hinges and I couldn't figure out why it wasn't working. And then I ended up making it really razor thin. I don't really trust the integrity of this as I go to open up the flap. Uh, so the only fix I can come up with is I'm going to take this, I built a little shim uh, that's just as wide as that, and um, that way by applying the hinges in the right direction and putting them flush up against their spot, uh, then when I apply this little shim, obviously this isn't perfect because I'm doing it with one hand, that will hold those hinges in place. Uh, I can put a screw down through this thicker part uh, and that will have some integrity and then I will glue that down uh, so that this will be the main setup. So essentially what it does is it just was a really complicated way of cutting a groove which is what I should have done to begin with but I, I am not smart enough to do that so uh, it's a it's essentially a four-piece groove <laughs> to fix my stupidity so now that that was done this is placing the hinges and placing the lid on the box and I just show that because um, one of the ways to put the screws in without tapping it is to back it in put it in and then back it out put it in and back it out so that was that process and I just use a card scraper to flatten it out and because I was sick of sanding uh, so now we're done with that part, and now we're moving on to the place to hold the pegs. And I wasn't about to touch hinges again after that, so I wanted to make this one able to slide in and slide out uh, without a hinge. So in order to do that, you have to bevel, make a kind of a little sliding dovetail, almost for lack of a better word, a beveled edge uh, on one piece and then a beveled edge on the other so that they'll match up and be able to fit nicely and you can see that but this that's just what I'm doing you can see I use basically the angle on my chisel um, to dictate the angle of that bevel I just tried to clean out that groove and now I cut a little top to size and I'm planing it down trying to match the angle of my chisel so I have the angle set there and I just keep planing it down and there we go now I finally got it and you can see how that'll fit into the end. That, that stock was a little thick right there. I'll end up thinning it down, but 
the angle's correct, so it will fit into that thing. And now here's my second mistake where I realize that top really needs a little handle on it because it fit too nicely and I could not get it out. Um, so I added a little screw and then tried to get it out that way. I ended up taking that screw back out, but it's the same technique. Screw it in a little bit, take it out a little bit, screw it in a little bit more, take it out a little bit. That way it doesn't split the top. Um, but after a few curses, I, I was able to get it out and then just clean up all the rest of the material uh, that's holding that up and sticking it in there and sanded it down a little finer uh, so now it slides in nice and holds pretty securely and then I did add another little cross piece of walnut to that so there's a little bit of grip to it so you can get it out make sure all the pegs fit in okay great uh, now I just dressed it up a little bit with some felt on the inside of those recesses uh, because they're done with a chisel and they don't look very nice uh, and the felt makes it look a bit, little bit nicer and a little bit more professionally done. Uh, I did think, I'm not sure how long that'll last in a moist environment on a boat, I'm a little bit nervous about that, but it'll be okay. And this is the part that everybody likes, uh, finally being able to start to finish this and you can really see the grain start to come out of the wood, it makes the walnut look much nicer. And here's some pictures of the finished product. Um, you can see it from several different angles. And then I get a close-up on the finished engraving um, there with the little card holder. So that's it. I mean, it, it was, I wouldn't do the bottom again. That was <laughs> made it a lot trickier. Uh, but it was a fun project. I don't ever like doing the same thing twice. So this was a good way to do the same, same project uh, in, with some new skills. Thanks for watching. Uh, please remember to like, comment, subscribe. I'd love to hear your feedback. And I appreciate your watching. Also, sorry for the narration. I'm sick this week, so my voice isn't working well. Thanks a lot.